Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I Right, hello and welcome to episode 62 of the Tech Bytes Audio Cast. I'm Tim and I'm here with Roy and it's Monday the 3rd of October. We'll get straight on with the topics we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be talking a bit about uh, Chrome being flagged as a virus. We're going to be looking again at Nokia and its return to Linux on low-end phones. We're going to be talking about the Samsung deal with Microsoft, Amazon's tablet, and many other topics that I'm sure uh, you'll enjoy listening to. So without further ado, we'll go over to Roy. But before we do, I'd just like to say, uh, Roy, it was an excellent uh, interview show with uh, Sebastian on uh, episode 61. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a a rather long marathon of a show, uh, three hours I think it came in on. But uh, it was a great show, and uh, I hope everybody else listened to it as well. Uh, Sebastian's a very nice guy. So, Roy... Yeah, <clears throat> the previous one didn't really have much of a fun to it. Uh, I think one of the good things that we did there is I think that's the only show where we mostly focus on just the uh, desktop experience with specific folks. So distributions such as Naji and uh, Ubuntu. Uh, in most shows we, we try and look at more mainstream things uh, going a little, a little bit beyond the uh, just the software world and just the uh, <coughs> Linux world. So. Uh, one of the things we try and do today is, is, is bring a few topics that are generalized to a mainstream, you know, uh, wide approach to the public, uh, and not just a very narrow field, not talking about very specific uh, small distributions, but uh, so one of the things I thought we should start with is the Nokia news. Uh, I've read only uh, about two, three articles about it so far, and I think it arrived um, originally, I think, from the Wall Street Journal. Where one person who works for Nokia said that on low end phones or in very simple phones, they work in a very minimalist operating system, not Symbian, uh, that will allow them to make a phone for under $100. So that's essentially going to run Linux if they stick to their plan, which, you know, and you know what, that's kind of strange though. Mm. But, uh, I mean, they had the uh, CEO of Nokia, and now he's the person who came from Microsoft. Uh, we, we spoke about it like almost every other show since it happened, uh, for obvious reasons, because Nokia was the, the, the front runner uh, among the phone companies uh, uh, which were supporting Linux, and just the, one of the main phone companies in general, the phone makers, Play Store, the phone uh, uh, designers, and so on. So <clears throat> here we had a uh, chance to uh, bring the, uh, Linux, and actually you can use Linux, even to loads of phones, something like hundreds of you know, hundreds of millions, maybe a billion phones over the next five years. Uh, and then Microsoft came in and kind of derailed this effort. And now they, at Nokia, speak about the potential of bringing this Linux very minimally so, um, Linux operating system to the, uh, to, they, they, they say something like a hundred million phones, uh, which is almost as many phones as exist with, with Android. I, I think it's 150 million now. Android phones out there, so that's that's pretty important. Uh, one of the things that happened uh, <clears throat> a few days ago. Did you hear about the layoffs at Nokia? No, I I am to be fair, Roy. I don't uh, cover and pay much attention to Nokia anymore. Um, yeah. If, if just very briefly, if we go back when you mentioned about uh, derailing and Microsoft uh, derailing uh, Linux on or Android on phones, I think uh, the term now that we should apply to Microsoft would be more creaming, uh, creaming a little off the top. It seems that Microsoft is doing very well out of other people's work on uh, on Android phones with its uh, well, licensing fees. Um, very prospective thing from Goldman Sachs, which I personally don't like all sorts of reasons, but. They were generating this perspective kind of on into the future, uh, fear and certainty and doubt tactic, uh, which enables them to name a very big number, uh, I think half a, I think it's half a billion dollars, uh, being made from phones running Android, mm. uh, which of course 
is kind of based on speculations and prices we don't know for sure. It's based on the assumption that Microsoft can continue to export those companies in the future. Uh, and the I think really the main purpose there, uh, from Gold, by the way, Goldman Sachs is uh, be one of the big investors in them. It's like Bill Gates and stuff. So they are very close in many ways to the companies they speak about, the conflicts of interest. But in this case, I think they were used again to kind of give the impression that the that Microsoft was doing very well, even with Android, uh, which works quite well for Microsoft from a point of view they can explain to the, to their. Uh, shareholders, you know, here Karen investing in us and buying shares because you know we are doing even well despite the fact that we just own salmon is completely losing the you know the battle. I think they pay developers now, even in like around Nokia, they pay people to develop for Windows Phone 7, and obviously losing loads of money doing that. Uh, and it doesn't work, and they've, they've died almost a year, and actually, they've died more than a year ago, even before that. And they carry on failing. Well, I mean, I was just going to mention that. I can't remember where I read the rumor that uh, they were paying uh, developers to develop for Windows Phone 7. But I, it just goes to show how far I think Microsoft has lost the plot. Because consumers aren't interested in how many thousand apps are available. They're interested in quality applications that they can run on their phones that may be very useful or even just gimmicky. Uh, it's what's made Android very popular. It's those uh, play twice applications which maybe make a silly noise or do something funny and everybody has a quick chuckle and then you delete them again and you, you never see them again. It's that type of thing which uh, has made Android very popular but I think artificially creating an ecosystem of applications for the Windows Phone 7 has no bearing on uh, or no interest to the, customers, to the customer base. I think it's fair to say and maybe there might be a few that will criticise me but people are not interested in Windows Phone 7. We've seen uh, 7.5 released and we've got an advertising campaign running apparently and I can't think of, remember seeing it and certainly the talk of the town isn't Windows Phone 7. In fact, I'd probably go as far as to say that it'd be very hard push to find much Windows or Microsoft advocacy on your mainstream sites anymore. It's uh, it's very difficult to find. It's really hard to do actually. Uh, Which, one of the things that there is seen an article uh, about Nokia and Windows Phones and that. Uh, I was just looking for a quote while I was while we were talking. About. The exact quote is uh, it's from a person called Moore. I don't have his first name, and he's quoted in CNN as saying it was kind of a horrible experience. The whole thing was just a complete mess, uh, and that's about Windows and Nokia. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the things that happened recently, and I'm not sure if covered it in the show or just in posts and whatever in blog posts, but uh, I found out about one of the. Um, one of the, I think it was like vice president of Microsoft or something, a person pretty senior when it comes to, I believe, the phone 7 thing here. I think they call it mobile unit or whatever. We keep changing the names. And one of the things they actually have done over the years, just in case people are curious, they were folding divisions into one another to hide losses. So basically, if you have one thing performing really badly, you probably want to merge it with something that does very well. And they, this way you can say, look, we are doing extremely well in here and here and here and in here. But what they actually do is they hide the loss, the, instead of showing you half the things losing, like for example in search, I think they now approach the pace of losing about $4 billion uh, a year just in search and online things. So uh, they would be inclined, and I don't think they can hide it in this case, but with smaller divisions where they maybe lose a quarter of a million, or a quarter of a billion, sorry, uh, they would merge it with something else. They'd call it something like the entertainment division, and then they'll have like, you know, games and mobile and everything combined in, in, in the same bundle, and they claim, oh, look, we are very successful, you know, we make profits here and here and here, but there is no separation to show you exactly where the losses come from. Uh, so that's what happens with the phones, and and and, and I I think they, I'm, I was always wondering what they would consider to be the patent thing, and I suppose the way they would prefer to classify that is not really something like licensing or patents or something. They will maybe at some some stage just classify Android uh, income from you know money they make out of other people's phones as being like a success of Windows Phone or like the mobile division. Yeah. And we'll think, oh, where is this money coming from? You know, what do you, what do you make? And at some stage, if they cancel this phone, they'll say, well, we don't make anything. So people say, so you're like essentially a patent troll. And they'll say, no, no, we're Microsoft, you know, a big company. But if they don't make phones anymore, if they don't have a platform to compete against Android, 
they basically become a troll. Mm. A company with patents, or at least a division with patents, and no actual substantial uh, product. So, so